Well, good morning. Welcome to chapel. Hey. <laughs> she just said, hey. Uh, for those of you, this is your first chapel, and you're wondering if you should have scanned your uh, QR code already. No. You will do that on your way out, uh, so you can rest assured you're still good. You will get your Christian formation credit. The question I think that we want to ask today is, what do you believe? What do you believe? Do you even know what you believe? That's a good question. I know I didn't know exactly what I believed when I was 19 years old. Uh, But we want to challenge you with, hey, what is it that you believe with your life? And I know some of you, many of you, like close to 400 of you, just kind of graduated from uh, high school. I mean, in May, but, and I I was talking with you, uh, some of them, I know you have yearbooks, and they were signed yearbooks, and you had, everyone uh, talked to some of you, had you send me in some of your favorite signatures, your favorite, um, like, statements from your yearbook. So we're going to play a game, all right? We're going to play a game. I took your, like, real yearbook signatures, and I combine them with fake ones. And you're going to have to tell me, are they real or are they fake yearbook quotes, okay? We're going to start with you. What's your name? Uh, Tate. Tate, where are you from? Uh, Amarillo, Texas. Texas. Anybody else from Texas here? All right, okay. Okay, so let's get the uh, first one on here. Tate, stand up, Tate, stand up. If you win this, you get a prize, all right? High school was easy. It was like riding a bike, except the bike was on fire. The ground was on fire, and everything was on fire. Is that a real or fake statement from your yearbook? Real. Real. Real? Real. All right. Come by the Christian Formation office. I'll get you a free prize. All right. Who's next? All right. Are you ready? Uh, Sure. Yeah, sure. Stand up. I'm glad you said on the end. What's your name? Uh, Caden. Caden. Here we go. Caden, where are you from? Uh, Norman. Norman. That's in Oklahoma. That's not too far away. All right, here we go. Statement. I'm sorry that everyone is so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm so popular. Real or fake? Uh, real. Real is true. All right, come by and see me. All right. Trey, stand up. All right, tell us who you are. Um, Trey, I'm from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Okay, here we go. I want to thank Google, Wikipedia, and to whoever invented copy and paste. Is that real or fake? Real. Real? It's real. All right. All right, here we go. Who's next? You. Tell me who you are. Jaden Gillen. Jaden Gillen, freshman from where? Bethany, Oklahoma. All right, here we go. What you got? Shoot for the moon. If you miss, you'll die in space, which is cool. Real or fake? fake? He says fake. Oh, it's real. Oh, well. You lose. Okay. (laughs) Hamilton, stand up. Tell us your name. Reese Hamilton. From? Arkansas. Okay, here we go. See how you do. Remember that really great math class? Yeah, me either. Is is that real or fake? Real. It is fake. You lose. You lose. All right, Devin. Ready? Stand up. Devin, where are you from? I'm from Forward, Texas. All right, here we go. (laughs) I'm so glad most of us made it. Is that real? Is it real? Oh, it's fake. My goodness. All right, we're down on the front row now. Stand up. Tell me your name. I'm Grayson Stanley. Grayson Stanley. All right, here we go. See what you got. Thanks to all my teachers, I learned to write good. Real. Real? It's real. Come down to our office. All right, next. Stand up. Tell us your name. I'm Seth Spruill from Houston, Texas. Seth Spruill from Houston, Texas. Here we go. I look better than the person in the picture next to me. Yes or no? 
That's pretty real. That sounds pretty real to you. It's real. All right. It's real to you. Okay. All right. We're going over here. Uh oh. You thought you were going to get away from it, but <laughs> you're pointing at him. I'll go to you. All right. Stand up. Tell me your name. Uh, Ken Gerard from Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Ken Gerard, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. All right. Here we go. Character limit for our senior quote. That seems unfair. We refuse to be constrained by these. Real or fake? I'm going to say that's fake. It's real. <laughs> it's real. All right. All right. I think that's an. Well, one more. No. Come on, Naya. Do we have one more? Is there one more? All right. Here we go. Stand up. Tell us who you are. Naya. No, just Naya from Houston. From Houston. All right, here we go. I don't know. You can just put me... Real. <laughs> you can just put some quote in for me. She says, real. It is real. So, I thought these were funny. Uh, the reality is, we live in a world that it's kind of hard to determine what is real and what isn't, right? I mean, it's just probably harder than it's ever been to like try to figure out what it is that you really believe, what it is that is worth believing. Because in this generation, we have people and we have organizations feeding us purposefully false information. I mean, that's just the reality. We have this false information that is being fed to us. What is left? There are... Wow. Thank you. I like... So while I speak, if you get bored, there are bubbles behind us. Uh, so... <laughs> I love it. This is a good way to start the year. It's a good way to start the year. Um... So there's this guy, Peter Mackin, Mackinto, Mackindo was his name. He's 20 years old, so he's like Gen Z. I should probably stand here in the bubbles, you know? No. Uh, I'm not going back. But, so he's 20 years old. He goes to this political, like, rally. And it's, and it's really contentious. People are are marching back and forth, protesting, saying, hey, uh, you know, taking whatever position that they're taking. And he's like, this is crazy. These people are taking... <laughs> these people are taking, like, they're... These people are going crazy over things that, like, they shouldn't be going crazy over. So this guy, he, he's Gen Z, so he rips this poster off the wall and writes on it, birds aren't real. Now, he didn't write that, but he wrote, I mean, he didn't write it that big. He just wrote it in hand. And so he's, got, he's, he's walking back and forth protesting, and he's just, he just tried to think of the most ridiculous thing he could think of, okay? He's 20 years old. It's like putting bubble machine in the baptismal when someone's speaking. It's like, you're just trying to go, hey, Birds aren't real. And so let's get people. He got a group of people and they just started walking like, birds aren't real. Birds are. And they're getting so fired up. Well, I mean, you have real protests going on. And here's a group of students who are 20 and they're just playing a joke. They're like, let's tell them that birds aren't real and see how many idiots believe us. And they're like, they're going, birds aren't real. And so they're saying this. Well, sure enough, this turns into a national conspiracy thousands upon thousands of people begin to believe that birds aren't real. Now, all of the Gen Zers who were in the birds aren't real campaign knew it was just a joke. It was actually them just going, uh-uh, we're not going to believe all this crazy stuff. We are going to say this. We're going to just show you how crazy people can be. So they have this campaign. Birds aren't real. And yet they knew the whole time that they were not being honest. I was reading in the New York Times and there was a, a quote about this whole thing. And it says this, 
in a post-truth world dominated by online conspiracy theories. Let me say that again. I said conspiracy theories. Uh, <laughs> conspiracy theories. That's kind of hard to say. Conspiracy theories. Young people have coalesced around the effort to thumb their nose at, fight, and poke, poke fun at misinformation. My guess is, though, that there are still some people out there that believe that birds are just drones that were put there by the government, and when they land on power lines, they recharge. But the, that sentence really caught my attention. And, and the question I have to ask is, do we live in a post-truth world? And maybe so. And if that's the case, then it seems like finding the real truth would then be incredibly important. Now, the questions I began to really grapple with when I was in college, and undoubtedly the questions that you're going to need to, to grapple with, is what do I believe? It's this process by forming your own core belief. But what do I believe, really believed? Me. What did I believe about politics and people and issues, social issues, institutions, church? What did I believe about God, about Jesus, about evolution, about creation, about Nazarenes? What did I believe about the Bible and marriage? And the list goes on and on. What do you believe? Do you even know? Because it's a journey that I started when I was in college. But I'll tell you, I'm still on the journey today. Now, I, I believe that, um, I'm looking for my phone, but it maybe it's right here. I, on my phone, have... Um, Notes. Now, if you have your phone, go ahead and get it out. Go ahead and get it out. If you have an iPhone or, or what, I don't even know what you have on an Android, if it's notes or whatever, but uh, wherever you keep notes, go to your notes section, and I want you to compose a new note, okay? This is what I want you to do. Just compose. Just go to your, get, go to your notes, compose a new note, all right? Are you with me? I'm not seeing everybody with me. No, and just say, you use the words, I believe. Just, just type that, I believe. And then put three dots after that, dot, dot, dot. I believe, dot, dot, dot. That's all I want you to do today. I believe with three dots. And I want you to start developing a list of the things that you believe. I have this note on my phone. I've done it for many, many years. I used to do it in a journal where I wrote. Now I put it on a, my phone notes and I use it. I go back to it. Sometimes I have to go back and I have to tweak it and I have to change it because something that I discovered in a conversation or something that I felt like maybe I needed it to be added or needed to be tweaked or changed from a belief, I just keep it as an ongoing journey. But I think it's very important for you as you start college or as you continue it or as you finish your last year to start formulating these things that you believe. And maybe college will be the time in your life where you really nail down and establish those things. This is my prayer. Now, I know you will be faced with some challenging questions, some questions that challenge the way you've always thought things were, and that's okay. You're certainly going to face your own difficult issues. That is something you will go through. You will have moments that will threaten you, that will make you feel like, hey, I need, I need to think about what this is and what is happening to me. And hopefully, as these things come your way, you will really take time to think about your life while you're living it, how you can live it best, and what happens when this life that we have is over. Is there a God? 
And what is God like? At SNU, we believe the answer to these important questions can be found in multiple ways. Certainly through the resources of our mind and the way that we reason out things. Certainly through traditions that have been established and accepted for many, many, many years. Always through experience and people that we get to talk to, people that we get to know, things that we experience in our lives, but also through scripture. And we believe scripture is the thing that informs the others, that scripture is important to us. And so we integrate scripture, the Bible, in all that we do through our classes, in our chapels, in everything. We call it the word of God because we believe it to be divinely inspired by God and given to and through the writers of scripture. And in their writing, we find that we are led to a right relationship with God. We are led to this relationship that will inform all of our other core beliefs. Now, there's a book in the Bible called John, and it's one of the four books that we call Gospels. It is, uh, and Gospels is simply a word that means good news. So whenever you hear the word gospel in chapel or in class, you think immediately, okay, good news. What is this good news? Well, the good news, according to John, is the news about Jesus and the way that Jesus does things. It's the story of Jesus and his kingdom. It's written by a man named John, who was an apostle. He had a brother named James. They had a dad named Zebedee. They fo he followed Jesus from the very beginning all the way through his ministry. And he has a clear purpose for writing this book of John. And that purpose, he states himself at the end of his book. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is a major theme in John is belief. What do we believe? How should we be believing about God? In chapter three in this book, John tells a story about a man named Nicodemus. He was a religious man, a Jewish man. He was a leader. He knew the Bible well, the Old Testament, the Torah. And he came to Jesus at night to speak with him about the truth. We don't know exactly why he came, but he came anyway. And it's probably because he was seeking understanding. Jesus had developed quite a reputation. He was a healer. He was a leader. And we do know that Nicodemus came to Jesus at night, which could possibly be because he, it wasn't a popular decision to, to go as a Jewish leader and talk to this rabbi who was causing so much trouble. Whatever the case, we know that he came because he wanted to know some answers to his questions. At least he wanted to figure out what he should really believe. And Jesus doesn't disappoint him. He speaks to Nicodemus about being born again. Jesus uses this like familiar metaphor to describe what life with Jesus in this kingdom would be like. It would be kind of like being born again, not physically, obviously, we aren't born again that way, but we are born again spiritually. And when you are born in this way, again, it's, it means, you know, what happens when you're born is you walk, you learn to walk, you learn to crawl, you learn to, to talk, you, like you learn to do things in a certain way. It just is what happens. It's amazing the way that babies develop. And so Jesus uses this to describe what the Christian life would be like, like you are going to have to walk and talk and do things in a different way. And this way he talks about is the kingdom of God. 
In verse 16, Jesus reveals the good news in a nutshell to Nicodemus. While all the others were there, were listening. Now, it has become the most popular Bible verse in the world. So, if you, if I were you, and I was going to begin my journey to establish my beliefs, I certainly would want to have this Bible verse memorized. If it is, of all of them, probably the most memorized and most quoted Bible verse in the world. And so I would challenge you to start today to memorize John 3.16. I think it would be wise if you haven't already done so. Many of you are like, uh, first one I ever memorized. Here it is. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. This is the word of God. And it's for the people of God. And so I say, thanks be to God. The verse just contains so many amazing things. Just questions, things that if you just start breaking them down, you start realizing, man, I could really establish a lot of my core beliefs in this one verse. Like God, who is God? Who is worthy of our belief? Who is this God? What are we talking about? What do I believe about God? Is God real? Is, is, who is it that gives new birth? Is this just something that we do psychologically to make us feel better about life? Or is God this thing that is beyond us, that is transcendent, that goes beyond and sees us? Does God actually create? Did God create me? Did God create this world? And if he did, then isn't that kind of a difficult concept to comprehend? Who created God? God was always... For some, God is a scary concept. This idea of being in a a church setting and hearing these messages about God, they don't sit well with some of us because our concepts of God come from whatever source. And so that makes some of us a little bit cautious. But it's a question I think we need to answer. God does seem so holy and so distant. But what is it that God does? What is God's motive? God so loved. God so loved. God loved. This was God's motive to begin with. Now, there's a lot about God that you can start talking about. There's things about God that that indicate he's a God of authority and a God of justice. God is sovereign. We can use different words to refer to God, but we know that all of these things come back to this idea that in essence, God is love. And this love is extended to who? Well, God so loved the world. Now, when God loved the world, this man who does this include? And I think at this point, Nicodemus would have been a little bit shocked because Nicodemus probably would have thought that God loved the, the Jewish people, the chosen people, but did God love everybody? That was a new concept. Is everybody loved by God and welcomed by God? The whole world seems like a little too much. But that's probably why Jesus said it. God loved the world so much that he gave. He gave. This is uh, what God does. God offers us love, hope, and salvation. And how does he do it? By giving it to us. You ever receive the gift? All you have to do is receive it and open it. It's awesome to receive a gift. 
And so God gives. And what does God give? He gives us his only son. And this brings us to another core development when we are trying to determine who is God? Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? This love from God that caused God to give people his only son, the perfect living example in life. He lived the way we should live. But God, through Christ, Christ lived and then he died and he rose from the dead. And somehow in all of that, we are able to be in right relationship with him because God gave us this gift of Jesus on the cross. He gave his only son. Nicodemus is thinking of Bible stories at this time. He's thinking of a time where he was called to, when, when one of the patriarchs was called to sacrifice his own son. And in his mind, he is now relating Jesus to that story. Why did God die? Why did God send, why did God send Jesus to die and to raise from the dead? So that whoever believes, Whoever believes, which is exactly what we've been talking about today. What does it mean to believe? What does Jesus mean here when he says, you need to believe? Now, the word believe is obviously an English word, but it comes from a Greek word that originally, that is pisteo, and it really stems from a word meaning persuaded. And when it's used here in John, the word means more than just intellectual belief, like I believe that something is true. It is used to determine when you say, I believe in God, that you trust them completely. Have you ever trusted someone completely? That's the word that John is using. Trust them completely. Because that kind of belief leads to action. If, if you trust someone completely and they say, hey, I think you could jump off that bridge and into the water, you would just do it because you trust them completely. If, if you trusted someone completely, they could hand you a parachute in an airplane and you might jump out. If you're crazy, you might jump out because you trusted them completely. This is the kind of word that John is using uh, and, and that Jesus said, you trust them completely. I, I took a youth group to uh, a uh, amusement park down in Florida called Islands of Adventure. This was years ago. And uh, we walked into Island. I mean, doesn't that look awesome? Like, it just sounds fun. Like, that's what I want life to be, like an island of adventure. And so, like, we go in, and this kid, David, we go into the opening, and it was amazing. And he sits on this bench right at the very, you know, front of the park. And he sits down. I said, hey, we're all going to go ride the Incredible Hulk, which is a cool roller coaster. We're like, hey, we're going to ride the Incredible Hulk. What are you, what are you doing, David? He's like, I'm just going to sit here. I'm, not, I'm just going to hang out in the shade. I'm like, you're just going to sit on the bench? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why? Are you sick? I mean, I was trying to get to him. Like, what's going on with you? You, know, you don't want to go do, you don't want to have islands of adventure? You know, it's like, come on, come with us. Like, No. So we go, we ride the Hulk and we go to some other rides. We come back. He's still sitting on the bench. An hour later, all day long, David sits on the bench in the shade and doesn't really do anything else, goes and gets something to eat. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what in the world happened? I didn't find out what happened until later where some of these punk kids in my youth group showed me a video of them convincing David that if he were to ride the rides, it's been proven, documented, that if you were to ride the rides, you would possibly get what they called adult shaken baby syndrome. <laughs> and they had, you know, AB... S, they called it adult or ASBS, adult. <laughs> and they had this kid convinced that if he rode one ride at Islands of Adventure, that he would end up maybe, you know, really being sick and taken to the hospital. They had him go, I mean, he totally believed it. See, that is the belief, the kind of belief that John is talking about. 
however misguided, it is a belief that causes you to act. It's a belief that causes you to act. So doesn't it make sense that we should follow the people that we trust and we should listen to them because Jesus is worth trusting. You will not perish, but have everlasting life. So it brings me back to that core idea. What happens to, what are our core beliefs? What do we believe? Now, some people believe in Christianity and have believed and become Christians because, because of this idea of eternal life. And I want to say to you, this is a great promise from the Christian scriptures. Whatever it is it looks like, I don't know. But I do believe that as a Christian, we live and we just keep on living. But the thing that's so interesting about this whole idea is that eternal life doesn't begin somewhere when you die. It, become, it begins when you listen to that scripture and start living into this way of Jesus. All of a sudden, your life takes on this eternal aspect so that when things happen in your life that don't make much sense, you have been living in such a way that you can experience the love and joy of Christ. I wanted to start chapel this semester with something that's just this basic idea that calls us into some core beliefs. I wanted to start launching some conversations. If you want to see what's on my notes about what I believe about God and all of the other things, I am more than welcome to have that conversation with you. But I want to end with just this challenge to, in your heart and mind, really consider where you are with Christ, what you believe about God. And perhaps if one of you says, I want to start this year off by maybe making some changes in the way I believe and the way that my attitude is and my actions I want to give you that opportunity. Will you bow and let me pray for you as we close today? God, thank you for the students, for all of the work that got them to this place. And all that we have been through to get to this point. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bless them so good today. Be with each one of them, I pray. Wherever they are in this journey, whatever they are in the formation of their beliefs, would you just help them? And as we leave this place, oh God, would you be with them? Would you challenge some of them to learn this great verse where we hear how much you love us, so much so that you sent your son, that we can be in right relationship with you. And if there's someone here today who wants just to decide to live in this kingdom way, give them the strength to do it. Bring along the person that they need to talk to to make that decision. And God, be with us all as we go into this first week of school. We just bless us here at SNU. Walk with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all are dismissed. You will go out and scan your cards on your way or scan your phones on your way out. And we'll see you. God bless.